I should start in English. So, um, so the idea is, is, is the following. So it's a little icebreaker. So uh, each of you are going to pick a, your a neighbor, who, whomever, and you take um, 30 seconds or a minute just to introduce yourself. Um, and then I'm going to ask you to do a little exercise. So please just get to know one another just very quickly. 30 seconds. <coughs> So, uh, 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 there's been a there's been a study that actually demonstrates that uh, most people consider themselves as non-creative, and if you actually study these people, 80 percent of them. Uh, you can link back to the fact that at some point when they were younger, someone told them that they can't draw. So literally being uh, told that you can't draw, uh, as you grow up, you take this as a reason why you're not creative. So <clears throat> when you do uh, innovation and creativity, it's key to actually be okay with uh, things that are not perfect that you might be wrong or you might do something that is not great. And each of these drawings are actually very creative. So everyone should be you know, willing to you know, try to be creative and share, and share that gift. Right. So yeah, one idea, I don't know how I jumped there, uh, is if you want to be creative, if you want to enter um, a creativity process, you, you, should, you should delay judgment and, and not be judgeful and not fear judgment of others. It's really key. Okay, so uh, things that we're going to talk about today. Uh, so I'm going to do a, a very short intro introduction about myself. <clears throat> I'm going to share my intent of why I'm doing this bar camp today. Uh, we're going to start with a little um, scan of what's going on in the world and why innovation is so critical today. Uh, then we're going to dwell into exactly what design thinking is. We're going to look at the process. We're going to look at a couple definitions. Then we're going to uh, uh, look at how you can apply design thinking uh, while you're running a project. Then we're going to uh, look at <coughs> what does it mean for um, leadership uh, and if you want to build a design-centered uh, organization, how you, how you can go about this, and then I'm going to ask a little bit about uh, uh, feedback about this presentation. Okay, so a little bit about myself. So I did a couple companies uh, uh, when I was younger. Uh, today I'm an agile coach, uh, innovation consultant. I do mentor uh, some startups in uh, incubators in Singapore. Uh, so I'm a very big uh, Lean Startup Advocate uh, and Design Thinking Evangelist because I think this is a super powerful approach and we'll see why. I also do facilitate a lot of uh, innovation games and from time to time I'm also a Scrum Master and Product Owner. Uh, so uh, the kind of things that I'm excited about today are uh, sharing economy. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm super excited about all, all this uh, new uh, stuff coming about. Uh, cryptocurrencies as well. I think there is tremendous potential in this. Uh, of, of course, I like uh, mentoring startups, uh, permaculture. There's a number of things that are happening today that I'm uh, very excited about. So these are a number of those. Normally, you should be able to read. But, uh, okay, and my job today, so I work at Palo IT. I'm the head of digital innovation. Fancy uh, title. Uh, I do, uh, but uh, very... Uh, Practically, I do uh, business development. I am an agile coach, <coughs> uh, and sometimes I speak about innovation at conferences. Okay, so um, little step back, looking at the big picture uh, in the world today. What's going on? So it's moving too fast. Okay, so uh, we all realize that uh, change is actually accelerating these days. 
like the number of uh, product releases, versions, and uh, literally the kind of technology trends that are becoming mature are uh, more and, uh, coming more and more. Also, the rate at which technology is being adopted, uh, the rate at which the technology is adopted by 80% of the market used to be decades, now we're talking year, years or even months. So that's phenomenal in terms of impact. Point on that is happening also is the fact that, as I was saying, there is a number of uh, big technology trends that are mature that, uh, and, and more and more are coming about. So unfortunately, you, you can see, but uh, the kind of technology that are actually uh, coming to maturity now, uh, we've been with internet, social, mobile, cloud for uh, big data for a number of years. Now we're talking 3D printing, renewable energy, Internet of Things, connected system, and this kind of stuff. And we have a whole bunch that we know that are coming about. And the way innovation is being driven today is not only can we uh, play or uh, imagine new products with one technology, but we, we are combining several technology trends together. So that's also quite phenomenal. Okay, so another... Um, interesting phenomenon that is happening uh, these days is this concept of uh, living services. So I don't know if you guys have uh, heard, heard of this, but the idea is coming because of two, uh, two uh, phenomena that are happening at the same time. One is the fact that everything becomes digitized. Our homes, our cars, our uh, clothes, our doors, uh, everything we can think of uh, is becoming dig digitized. And then there is this uh, concept of liquid expectations that is also happening. So the concept of uh, liquid expectations is, for instance, if you take Uber um, and the fact that now we don't have to pay when we uh, get out of the car, it's a great uh, service. It's something that uh, everyone enjoys and that creates an uh, awesome uh, experience. So since this is happening, we expect other uh, services to provide the same kind of experience. So this is what we call liquid uh, expectations. Once we have an experience in some industry, we're expecting the same kind of experience in another industry. Another example of this would be, uh, there are some uh, mechanic shops that when you uh, send your car for repairs, there would be a, uh, the mechanic that literally takes a little selfie video of himself and sends it to you to, tell, to give you a status of your repairs. And it does that the very day you, uh, you put your car at the mechanic. This is a tremendous feeling, tremendous experience. You really enjoy you know, seeing actually the guy who's going to repair your car, give, giving you news about your car. This is great. So since this is happening somewhere, you expect the same kind of... Uh, uh, experience in some other industry. So this, this concept <coughs> is about liquid expectations. So the fact that we have liquid expectations in one hand and uh, digitization of everything on the other, the combination of those two creates a tremendous potential for a whole bunch of services to come about. Okay, so unfortunately you can't see the timeline, but uh, the idea is to uh, visually see the number of unicorns, so the, those companies that reach one billion market uh, cap uh, th uh, through time. So this graph starts at uh, 2011, and back then there were just a few, and the more we progress through time, so there are <coughs> literally tens of unicorns coming uh, uh, every year now. Okay, so this concept creates quite a massive change in the way we are, you know, uh, addressing markets, people, and, and inventing new services. So the question is, how can we adapt to this changing environment? So uh, the uh, one way to look at it is to actually change the way we think about innovation. So. Now I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit about what uh, design thinking uh, enables. Uh, and one quick example of uh, design thinking uh, approach is this uh, uh, product that everybody knows. So uh, to go from this old ketchup pack to this new design, it took 42 years, right? 
to go from this old ketchup bottle that everybody knows that uh, is quite kind of painful to use to go to this new design, it took 112 years. So the idea with design thinking is instead of waiting decades uh, for this type of innovation uh, to happen, design thinking enables to do this uh, very quickly. <coughs> so this is another example of uh, design thinking. Um, this is a story of uh, uh, an engineer uh, that worked in uh, GE Healthcare uh, that invented a new MRI machine. Uh, so this MRI machine was uh, highly successful, was selling very well, and providing <coughs> a great service, the kind of image uh, that the MRI would, uh, would provide, would literally save life, and the machine was selling very well. One day, this guy decided to actually go uh, and visit a hospital where this MRI machine was in service. It was a children's hospital, and <clears throat> so uh, when he came to this hospital, and uh, when the first uh, patient came to uh, take an MRI, uh, he realized the kind of experience that people were going through to get the MRI, and so the kid that was coming by, was he was horrified because the kid was literally in panic before taking this MRI. It was a very scary experience. This machine can be very impre uh, uh, impressive. I mean, uh, they make a lot of sound, they're huge, and we're talking kids, so you have to actually lay down, get into the machine, and so on. So he decided to ask for more money to actually redesign the machine so that the machine would be less scary for kids. And one uh, consequence of this machine being so scary is that every single kid that needed to take an MRI had to be, uh, had to take uh, an anesthetic, right? So go through this protocol of actually uh, uh, artificially going to sleep, right? So, and this was actually dangerous and very costly. So the way they addressed this problem is the guy actually went to a children's school next door and try to understand how can I change my experience so that kids are no longer scared to take an MRI. So what happened is he realized by actually studying kids that kids, uh, for kids, they, uh, they need, they, um, they enjoy everything as long as it, uh, as it is an adventure. So this, they decided to turn around this experience and try to uh, design it as an adventure. So they came up with this design uh, and they designed the entire journey, entire journey, uh, so that it became an, exp uh, uh, an adventure. So it's called the adventure series. So they tried, they experimented with a number of different uh, adventures. So this one, for instance, is a spaceship. They tried with submarines, they tried with a whole uh, set of uh, experiences. So now the kid uh, is welcomed by someone who's uh, disguised as a captain or something like this. There's a whole story telling around uh, what it takes, uh, the adventure of, uh, uh, of going through this uh, 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 adventure. And uh, there's even uh, uh, fake uh, sounds and there's fake uh, smells. There's a whole experience being set up. The result of this is that instead of no longer kids needed to be uh, put to sleep in order to, to take an MRI, uh, and this the rate of kids being uh, needed to take uh, uh, a sedative to take an MRI dropped from 80% to 5%. <coughs> it was a tremendous success. Uh, so this is also an approach where you actually try to take the user perspective in order to design the right experience so that you reach your, your, your objective. There's just a, a small illustration of how you can apply design thinking in, in a broader context. Just a quick question on that. Sure. sure. Um, <clears throat> this uh, achievement was done without actually making profound changes to the actual uh, exactly. mechanism, it's, right? Exactly. It's machine. a cheap way to uh, actually first experiment and then bring a lot of value uh, to this uh, to this process, because all it took was a few stickers and a storytelling mm. uh, and a guy in a, in a disguise. So yeah. Thank you. Okay, so this is this is actually the process of uh, design thinking. Uh, so we can run through it very quickly. So the first step 
uh, is about understanding the user perspective, really delving into the context and taking uh, the user perspective. The, se the second step, based on the insight that we gather while we're taking the user perspective, we're able to frame the problems in a new way, in a meaningful way, in an actionable way, so that we can start, based on a, a correct understanding of the problem we are addressing, we can start ideating. But we are ideating on the wrong uh, problem, and this is key. The key step is really to define, the, to frame the problem uh, in a different way and in a meaningful way. Then we, we go into the uh, ideation phase. So the idea here is to um, try to come about with as many idea, creative ideas as we can. <coughs> um, and then we're going to prioritize and try to select the best ones uh, that we can quickly prototype and test. Is that, is that all you need at Superhot? Can we? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna we're gonna look at a few definitions of uh, of design thinking, uh, just to set uh, 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 the understanding uh, right. So design thinking is a methodology used by designers to solve <coughs> complex problems and find desirable solutions. So this is for clients. This is one way to put to define design thinking. Another way is design thinking draws upon logic imagination, intuition, and systemic reasoning to explore possibilities of what could be and to create desired outcomes that benefit the end user, the customer. So it draws upon a number of different uh, domains. So logic, imagination, intuition, and systemic reasoning. So design thinking is about trying to combine things that we normally don't combine, both the emotional and the logical. So there is other uh, uh, definitions that uh, we can look at as well. Uh, another one would be to translate insight, observations into insights, insights into products and services that improve lives. Okay, this is a, a quick way to summarize the process of design thinking. So you observe people, based on your observation, you're gonna have insights, you turn, and then you turn this insight into product and services that are actually going to improve lives. Design thinking is an approach that frames problem creatively and generates innovative solutions, strategies, system, and paradigm at the nexus of domains. <coughs> okay, any questions so far uh, about the definitions? I'm not actually sure about the definition of nexus. Nexus Sorry. is like the crossroads of All right. different domains. Thank you. Okay. So we can't <coughs> possibly talk about uh, design without uh, talking about Steve Jobs. Uh, so there is a quote that I'm uh, putting here, which is uh, quite uh, helps to understand what design is. So it goes like this. Most people make the mistake of thinking design is what it looks like. People think it's the wiener. The wiener is like uh, the placard, just the, the outside uh, look of it. Um, that the designer are handed this box and told, make it look good. That's not what we think design is. It's not <coughs> just what it looks like and feels like. Design is how it works. Okay, so design is a little, goes, of course, a little deeper than just, you know, the aesthetics of, of something. Okay, so I would like to just dwell a little deeper into uh, what empathize uh, means and how you actually run an uh, em uh, empathy uh, phase or a research uh, project uh, in, in a very practical manner. So the idea is if you want to fully understand the user perspective, you actually need to go out there uh, into the field and actually outside the building uh, and actually uh, go and talk to your users. You want not only to talk, but you want to experience what they're experiencing. You really want to step into their feet, their perspective, so you want to observe them, you want to experience what they have to experience, and you also want to actually engage with them, so talk to them. So that's, that's really key to actually uh, have a human uh, relationship with, you, uh, with your users and really uh, feel empathy, and feel empathy <coughs> with their problems, with their challenges. 
what uh, context they are in while they're using the, your services. So that's, 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 uh, that's really key. So the way we are uh, running uh, projects, or the way you can actually derive design, the design thinking approach to actually run projects, this is how we are suggesting to uh, go about it. Uh, so at first, there's going to be a an understanding of let's imagine you are uh, you want to redesign a product or you want to launch a new product. So you're going to have a number of assumptions, a number of hypotheses. My users do have this challenge. My users have this kind of problem. So my users are not using my product more because so and so. So before you start your research activities, you have a number of assumptions. A, a, a number of things that you want to validate or uh, that you want to enrich or confirm and things like that. So you, you start with a number of hypotheses. This is going to drive how you're going to run the research. Then you're going to engage in a number of work streams, of research streams, so that you're sure that you are going to cover everything that needs to be understood to uh, start the designing, uh, the new design of your product or service. So the kind of uh, research activities that you can run are, of course, you want to talk to all the stakeholders of your of your project. You also want to, uh, as I just explained, go out of the building and actually go and meet your customers, uh, look at them in the context of while they're using your service, uh, and have them talk about their experience. <coughs> and, and even you want to try to uh, co-create or uh, uh, envision what a better product uh, would be with your, your end users. What you want to do as well is uh, scan what's going on in the market in terms of uh, technology trends or competitive products that are uh, coming about. You also want to look at lateral industry, like other industries that are uh, evolving in the same kind of, uh, 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 using the same kind of technologies or that are somewhat close to your industry. So you want to really scan uh, broadly what's, going, wh what's happening. Um, and uh, of course you also want to delve into exactly what the uh, business process and business objective of your projects are. So all this is like the research uh, phase, so it's before you start even understanding what you're going to build, you want to go through all these research activities so you really have a good grasp and a good understanding of what context you're addressing and, 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 and what the key challenges are. So. Okay, so once, once you have done all this research, the idea is that you have, um, you have had access to a, a lot of information, a lot of interviews with stakeholders, with users, with experts. Uh, you've done uh, competitive uh, research, so all, you also have <coughs> information from there. And the idea is every time you run an interview, you're actually going to debrief about uh, the interview and capture the key messages, the key information that you received during those interviews or during these uh, different uh, research activities. So you have a, 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 a very large uh, amount of information that you need to synthesize and you need to figure out if there are patterns or if there are commonalities or uh, different things. So the next step in the process is actually to synthesize this information, find common patterns so that you can actually derive what are the key problems and the key challenges that my users are actually facing? So that's, that's the next step. And this is when you actually frame the problem. So once you have all these insights, that's when you, are, you, have, you have the ability to actually reframe the problem and understand the key problems that you're addressing. One way to do this, if you are designing a, a product or a service, is you start with the customer journey. So you, you take the current customer journey and you're going to plug all, all your insights, your key insights, within your customer journey. So you get to see, okay, a lot of people told me they have issues at the uh, early stages in, my, in their customer journey, and then uh, other types of uh, problems all throughout the customer journey. Once you have all these insights, you're able to figure out, okay, what are the key problems that I derive from understanding those insights, and at what point of my customer journey those problems are. Once you have the problems, you're able to define what opportunities there might be. And this will be the starting point to redesign the new customer journey, the ideal customer journey, based on how you understand the problems 
of, of the current customer journey and the different opportunities that you have to improve the uh, new customer journey. <coughs> so at the end of the uh, research activity, you also have, uh, this is also when you're able to really understand what your audience is, and this is when you are able to uh, define your personas. So your persona are going to be your design targets. They are going to be like a shortcut for you to uh, remember and embody uh, this end user so that you can, all throughout the design process, you continue to feel empathy. So they are like the symbol or the representation of your user. So you want to define your persona with uh, a name, uh, an age, and uh, key characteristics, and, uh, and things like that, so that you can relate to this persona all throughout the design process and continue feeling empathy while you're actually inventing a new pr product for this uh, persona. Once you've done all this, only then uh, will you start the ideation process. This is once you have uh, understood the key challenges and the key problems and what the opportunities to innovate are that you're going to start the innovation process. So there are a number of activities that you can run to, to do this. Of course it depends on uh, what you're designing. Uh, you can uh, go very with a very quick uh, sketching for instance. Uh, there are also some uh, innovation games format that you can use just to uh, expand uh, capability of a group to come about with uh, original ideas. Um, uh, we run a, a number of different activities uh, uh, in the ideation uh, uh, phases. Um, once you have, um, uh, uh, so the idea in the ideation phase also, and this is uh, really key, is to try to bring uh, within this phase as many people from different functions within the company. You want to uh, create a team that is really uh, 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 multifunctional somehow, like that works across <coughs> functions within your company. It's people from finance, people from uh, marketing, people from uh, uh, executives, uh, all, all throughout the company because they have different perspective of the problem that you're trying to solve. So they are going to have different ideas and this is also uh, helping a lot to uh, <coughs> come about with uh, great ideas. So once you have uh, a number of uh, ideas, the idea is you, you're gonna define criteria to select the best, the best ones. So the more traditional or the uh, default criteria that you wanna take to select the, be the best ideas and to start prototyping has to look at how desirable uh, from a user perspective, your new solution is, uh, how feasible from a technical perspective your uh, new solution might be, uh, and how viable from a business perspective your uh, solution might be. So uh, innovation uh, is at the crossroad of those three domains, uh, business viability, technical feasibility, and user desirability. So if you have the connection of those three things, these are uh, good candidates for prototyping. So the next, uh, the next step is the prototyping. So there are uh, a lot of ways to uh, prototype, uh, not necessarily uh, starting to code. There is of course the, the rapid sketching, that's, that's an easy way, but you can also try to fake uh, the experiences uh, of your new solutions. So, for example, there is a, uh, at the uh, at, at the beginning of uh, before tablets were released, uh, one way they used to actually uh, prototype tablets, they they were wondering what size would be uh, adequate and what kind of features people were expecting with the tablet. So, they decided to prototype uh, what the tablet may look like. So they actually carved a wooden board. Uh, to actually test different sizes of uh, the tablet. And then they came with like uh, uh, different layers of paper with different uh, layouts for interfaces. So they could try with users uh, which one would make more sense or the best reaction to it. When you say they, you don't uh, point to a specific company, I guess. No. 
I'm not exactly sure uh, uh, that specific example. Right, that's uh, yeah, top level. All right. Yeah. Thank you. But then, of course, uh, and you can try to test this with, uh, ideally, with uh, prospective customers. But you can uh, also do uh, like hallway uh, usability test where you actually <coughs> pick up anyone and, and and evaluate your solution with uh, with them. So, but uh, yeah, that, that's just one example of. Uh, sure of uh, prototyping. Another one would be, uh, let's say you want to uh, design a voice-to-speech, uh, voice-to-text, sorry, uh, software. <coughs> so instead of starting to figure out whether, um, uh, you, uh, before you start building technology that actually enables this to happen, you want to fake the, ex the experience. So you're going to put someone in a room, uh, ask him to talk in a microphone, uh, and you're gonna fake the fact that the text shows up on the screen by having someone actually just listening and typing the screen. But at least you have the reaction of the customer of how you know pleasant or delightful or meaningful that experience might be and how viable that uh, concept or proposition might be on the market. So this is w when yeah you want to prototype and test very early before you actually start writing a single line of code, you want to validate and, and, and start testing super early, even before, right? <coughs> so to come back uh, at the overall process, so the first step is all this research activity. So the key one, of course, is the user perspective. You really want to understand what the problems are with your, your user. But the idea of this uh, illustration <coughs> is to say, at the beginning, you're going to diverge. You're going to uh, uh, gather lots of information. So it's a really uh, diverging thing. Uh, once you have all this information, you want to start synthesizing, synth synthesizing, right? And finding patterns and finding the problems and, 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 and finding what the key opportunities are. But from a very large amount of information, you want to narrow down into a few problem statements or a few key opportunity areas. So first you're gonna diverge and then you, you're gonna converge. So this is really the problem, figuring out what the problem is and what is the opportunities before you start the actual ideation and inno innovation phase. So first you diverge, then you converge, and then once you have your problem statement and the opportunity, then you diverge again. So you're gonna brainstorm, you're gonna ideate, you're gonna do those workshops where you come uh, invent uh, new concepts uh, and once you have a lot of them you find criteria to select the best one that you want to prototype so then you're going to converge again to figure out what is the not the best uh, solution and the best prototype that actually yield results that I want to try to experiment and, and, and build okay so that's another illustration of uh, the overall process called the double diamond uh, approach, it's ex the exact same thing. So first you diverge with research, so you bring about lots of information. The key here is to really understand the user perspective. <coughs> and then based on all this feedback, you find the patterns, you find the opportunity areas, and specific problem to solve. And starting from the problem, you're going to start your ideation phase, and then your, your prototype. Just another way also to, uh, to illustrate this, uh, this, uh, this whole process. <coughs> so of course this process is non-linear. So every step of the process uh, feeds into the previous one and the previous one feed, feeds in the next. And it's really, so you want to walk through the process uh, day after day, but then of course uh, you, you get inspiration for the next phases and you want to come back to what you've learned before and, and, and so forth and so on. <coughs> Okay, just a quick word about uh, Google. They have their own way to run their design thinking uh, uh, workshop and approach. So uh, this is from uh, Google Venture. So of course Google is starting a uh, number of projects themselves. They also uh, acquire uh, young startups and they incubate others. So most of uh, these uh, projects go <coughs> through this design sprint process, which is really a condensed version of the entire uh, design thinking approach. So first, they're gonna bring a whole bunch of people in the room, 
uh, to understand the context. So this first step says FFM. Then it says diverge. So they want to brainstorm all the possible ideas to uh, address the problems. Then they want to decide on what are the actually actually the best propositions that have been made. And then they prototype and validate and learn. <coughs> The difference here is that they run these in only a week, so they, they don't have the luxury to go out <coughs> to the field and actually to talk to users, so it's a really a shortcut, it's a sprint uh, version of the design thinking approach. Okay, if you, if you want to extend this to a larger uh, uh, phase and uh, um, uh, a richer version of uh, the design thinking approach, uh, you can actually find a, a roadmap of activities that actually uh, follow this uh, design thinking approach. So the first phase, as I was explaining, uh, has an, a, a lot of activities uh, that help discover the context in which you uh, are designing. Then you want to run a number of activities to help you brainstorm uh, solutions. Then you want to run a, a different type of workshops to prototype and then you want to implement and, and, and build your, your, your project. <coughs> I have a quick question, please. Sure. Uh, when do you know that you have to end the, the diverge phase? Um, I understand that uh, Google uh, said this is a time box, time box, box. Uh, this, the, the diverge would uh, last, uh, say, a week or something like that. Do you have another uh, criteria to end the diverge phase? then to enter the <coughs> phase, uh, what are your thinking about that? Um, How do you know that you have to end? Your okay, so you're saying, uh, when do I know I have enough information yeah. so that I can start to synthesize yeah. and so on? <coughs> so, yeah, I mean, you want, you absolutely want to time box because these activities can run forever, uh, especially when you do like a, a technology scan, I mean, uh, nowadays, if you start delving into what's what's happening uh, technology wise it can be infinite um, the idea is you are, are actually taking the problem through a lot of different angles so you know competition uh, experts users stakeholders uh, and so that you are know that you're covering all the all the fundamentals uh, when can you stop uh, normally we give ourselves like a time frame and, and, and we deliver but the, the problem is more <coughs> this is easy I mean once you have a lot of information you, can, you, you get a feel of uh, okay I'm, I know this already I'm, uh, people are repeating uh, the same thing to me again and again like you, you get a feel that okay I have enough insights I, you kind of uh, uh, perceive that you can uh, zoom in on the opportunity understand the key problems so you, you, you get to know that you are there uh, the, the more difficult part is the next one, when you actually have to define exactly what the problems are, the key problems, and, and write the, the key statements, uh, so that you know that you are actually going to ideate and innovate on the uh, right problem. That's that's the more uh, difficult uh, stage. Sure. So I'm going to uh, open uh, up now. Uh, this uh, approach and how you can actually bring this at the uh, organizational uh, level <coughs> to start introducing a design-centric culture within uh, organizations. So first of all, design thinking actually applies to uh, an, um, a number of uh, different uh, uh, realms. So the most basic thing that you can do uh, with design thinking is designing of course, object, jewelry, uh, product, uh, homes, and things like that. So that's the, 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 the basic level. Then, uh, if you uh, rise up in, uh, in uh, complexity, you can also design uh, experiences, like uh, uh, entire services, um, but uh, you can also use design thinking <coughs> to actually design entire uh, systems and platform and uh, do uh, 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 smart cities uh, based on, on design thinking or literally design new public services using design thinking. So 
the realm uh, to which design thinking uh, applies is really, really large. <coughs> so the first thing that design thinking helps uh, within organization is actually to strategize uh, differently and actually really bring the user-centric approach to the strategy itself. So the traditional way to think about strategy is to start from the core competency of uh, the company, what the company does and uh, what the skill sets are within the company. Once you have this, normally you think about, okay, what are my business models? What, is, what are my current revenue streams? Then the next step is going to be, okay, what other revenue streams can I actually invent and imagine? Next step is going to be, okay, what are the channels uh, uh, through which I can actually run this new business model or make this uh, revenue stream happen. And then you're gonna think about, okay, who are my actual users and segments that I can actually push this be uh, business model uh, to. So this is a traditional way to think about strategy. Uh, with the uh, design thinking approach, you want to uh, start from uh, the opposite end. So you wanna start with the actual user needs, uh, exactly what problem uh, you want to uh, help uh, solve with uh, which user problem you want to solve. Once you have this, you want to understand what a current ecosystem exists already that is actually somewhat addressing this need and how you can fit within that ecosystem. Then you're gonna uh, come about with the va a new value proposition that fits with the user need and the current ecosystem so that you can differentiate from the existing. And then you're gonna uh, try to build the capacity within your company to create that value proposition that fits within this ecosystem. So you really reverse the whole process. You really start from the user and uh, slowly go back to exactly what do I need to do within my organization to address this end user need. <coughs> uh, so design thinking uh, is rooted in a number of key principles. One key principle is the fact that you want to embrace experimentation. You want to uh, make sure that there is a space within your organization where it's okay to experiment and it's actually okay to fail. And you, you want almost to celebrate the people who are trying new things, even if it doesn't work, but just the uh, approach and the mindset of experimenting is key. So if you want to bring about uh, a design-centric approach to your organization, that space needs to exist. So it needs to be uh, set up. Um, because experiment is really the only way you can uh, learn. So because a failed experimentation is actually a, <coughs> a good source of uh, new information upon which you're gonna iterate until the next version of your uh, idea and then this is how you, you're, you're going to progress. Uh, another key principle is uh, radical collaboration. So uh, what design thinking uh, can bring to an organization is it forces people to break down the silos because uh, you want to create spaces where actually people get to meet and you are uh, within the process, there is this key element that you want to bring about people who are not used to work together to start uh, thinking and uh, uh, solving problems together. Uh, so this idea of radical collaboration is also uh, a key one. Another uh, key principle is this uh, focus on uh, human value. So again, What's really key with design thinking is to take to start first and foremost with the user perspective and feeling empathy with uh, what your end user is going through, and that is the starting point of your uh, innovation process. Uh, another element is that you want to break down this uh, hierarchy uh, within uh, organizations so that people from all. Uh, areas and different
different groups and different hierarchical level can actually collaborate. The other key element uh, is that you need to be mindful of the process. What it means is innovation is actually a process, so it needs to be taught. Uh, there are some tools, there are some specific uh, formats, workshop format, format <coughs> ways to run uh, research activities. So it's, okay, it's great to bring people together to uh, try to uh, experiment and reflect uh, upon experimentation and so on. But there are tools and there are processes that uh, help to actually navigate through the innovation process. Just a very quick uh, word about uh, innovation <coughs> games. Innovation <coughs> games somewhat are a shortcut to the design thinking approach uh, because every game is also built somewhat in the same way where when you start a game, you're gonna start with a diverging phase, and then when you conclude the game, you conclude with a converging phase. So you can run innovation games within just uh, uh, an hour or two, and yield uh, also quite uh, interesting results, uh, because you are actually going through this process in uh, an accelerated fashion. There is just uh, there is also something that uh, we are doing at Palo IT, um, which is really much uh, inspired from this design thinking approach, is the innovation days. So basically, we're going through the whole uh, design thinking approach, but to help our customers define a roadmap of uh, innovative projects. So the idea is again we start with. Uh, understanding the context and the business objective uh, of uh, our, our, our customer. Uh, we are going to do a little bit of research to understand exactly the kind of uh, business landscape or competitive uh, uh, landscape that uh, they are uh, in. And the innovation day starts with us giving a feedback upon our research. So we want this to be a very inspiring energizing uh, session where we know they, uh, they, they have identified an opportunity. We've done a lot of research in terms of what kind of uh, innovation can happen within uh, this uh, uh, realm. And then we're gonna help them go through a number of workshops uh, with a lot of people in the room so that they can map their challenges with the kind of, techno the kind of capability technology uh, brings and come about with new and disruptive ideas of how to address their problems. So it's really a one day intense uh, workshop where which starts with a lot of diverging activities. We want to uh, envision and entertain a lot of possibilities and then we're gonna help them figure out what are, map those, uh, all these ideas to their current problem and figure out what are the most promising uh, ideas and which one we want to start prototyping. Just a quick question out of Sorry. curiosity. Do you, in those uh, innovation days that Palo Alto uh, uh, proposes, do you sometimes get into situations where one team within the same company organization might have uh, very div divergent ideas when compared to another team within the same uh, business? Like, uh, you know, we, we, we know that, uh, well, I don't want to, uh, to express it too, uh, <laughs> I don't want to be too expensive here, but we know that in some organizations, you know, some teams are, feel like they're working against each other rather than together. Right. Yes. And uh, do, so is it some kind of situation that you are facing when uh, proposing these day, these innovation yes, absolutely. days? absolutely, but the, the difference is that suddenly these are people who are not used to be uh, sitting in the same room and actually uh, presenting their day-to-day uh, -day challenges and problems <coughs> and being asked and driven through a process to actually come about with uh, ideas to solve common problems. Mm -hmm. And what we've seen, uh, uh, what we see often is that suddenly just people just 
by expressing themselves and expressing those challenges, people realize, oh, but you are having that mm. problem. I'm actually having the solution right. of your problem. Uh, and they, they come with uh, uh, all kind of uh, uh, new solutions mm -hmm. that they just uh, didn't figure out before. Uh, but uh, when people are most of the time very uh, keen to uh, producing good results mm. and uh, helping it, each other out. Um, so we, we want, we are asking our customers when we run these innovation days to cherry pick somewhat, you know, uh, pick the right, right. people with yeah. the right mindset. Mm. And, you know, like people are, who want to uh, become <coughs> champions of, you know, the uh, innovation within the organization. <coughs> so normally we are not facing too many uh, issues in the room. No? <laughs> so you are declining uh, people from the syndicat, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <coughs> so also another example of how we uh, might be using the, the design thinking approach uh, in, other, in a, a to totally different context. So at PolarIT we also do a large scale um, agile transformations. Uh, but we want to start with a, a single pilot. So we start with transforming a team to adopt agile practices uh, uh, just within that team. Uh, and the way we are we are doing it, we're we're kind of following this very uh, process to actually understand what uh, the key issues are within this team. So we're going to do a lot of activities just to extract this information and feel empathy for the team, so that we can figure out what the problems are and what the solution might be. So. And this is just uh, an example, but you know, so the first stage where you actually normally would do the research activities within this context, we're going to do retrospective and we're going to do SWOT analysis and we're going to do value stream mapping of the different processes of, uh, of the team so that we have a lot of information to play with to really understand, okay, where are the key problems within that, 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 that team? Um, uh, so that we can start to figure out what are the right solutions and what are in, within our agile toolkit, which uh, solution we can apply. Once we understand the key problems, the real problem, we can, with the team, define what the best solutions are. So the first stage is to really engage with the team to uh, get them to voice their concerns, voice <coughs> their challenges, and things like that. Second stage is going to be once we have identified the problem, run a number of training activities with the team so that they do understand what kind of capability Agile can bring, what are the uh, possibilities. Uh, and then with them, we're going to actually uh, define what are the most meaningful solutions considering what the problems uh, they are, they're facing. So we're kind of mapping the design seeking process to a Agile transition for uh, IT team. So that's also another way we can apply design thinking. Okay, so just a couple of uh, closing statements. Um, what's really interesting uh, with design thinking is that uh, it, so technology can bring a lot, but technology is not enough. What design does, it, it humanizes uh, technology or it humanizes uh, innovation. So it creates something that people can engage with and that they want to bring uh, in their life. <coughs> uh, so it really defines what the future is going to be. Uh, and then this very last statement, which I think uh, is, a, is a good closing. Uh, design thinking is the capacity and has the responsibility to shape the future we want to live in. So with this, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, well, if you have any questions. Yes, I have one. Um, what uh, are the similarities and differences uh, between the design thinking approach and the lean startup approach from your point of view? Okay, they are very close. Uh, I mean, uh, so design thinking 
that dwells more into the user perspective, all this research activity and you know feeling empathy, this is really the design thinking part. The Lean Startup is all about uh, putting uh, a prototype, an MVP early, like uh, testing solutions. So it, it's really the end of the process. Like you have your idea and you want to put it in the end of your user and uh, capture metrics to really understand is that the right product or should I pivot? Should I change my, my solution? So they're close because they're both talking about prototyping and testing, but design thinking uh, starts earlier with all this activity where you really want to understand the user and you want to really understand what are the opportunities, what are the key problems I need to address before I invent the solution. More the approach. Yeah, more uh, user centered. Uh, another, uh, so we have a way to present uh, Palo IT, which is to say, we start with a user perspective, the design thinking process, and then we move on to the Lean Startup uh, activity where we want to test very early and get feedback from the users to make sure we are designing and building the right thing. And then once we're sure that we, are, we have taken the right direction, we enter this uh, agile uh, life cycle with iteration and again at the end of every iteration we're gonna uh, get feedback. Uh, and, and this is uh, uh, quite unique to uh, the way we are doing things since we are really focusing on both really understanding the user perspective before we design a solution and then uh, <coughs> building it. And we believe that those two approaches, design thinking and agile, are very complementary they are really relying on the same type of principles. Uh, as I was explaining uh, throughout this uh, presentation, design thinking has a lot to do with uh, radical collaboration, like, and, and so does uh, Agile. Uh, Agile is also uh, all about uh, validate, validating early uh, your, uh, your product. Uh, so does uh, design thinking. So they're very, they, they work on very similar uh, principles. Um, really, uh, design thinking is somewhat the same principle without uh, build, uh, building an actual product. It's before you've actually designed, built the product, you're already kind of in that feedback loop where as soon as you have an insight, you want to test this with your user, imagine the solution and get feedback before you iterate and come come again with a, a better solution. 